I hit you up because we just got some interesting information. <laughs> oh my God. It's big news. We're here to talk about our son, MC. When I heard that the special need had to do with an intersex condition, the first thought that I had was, let's make sure they don't do the surgery. There was no medical reason that this decision had to be made at that time. I, I think the decisions made by the state send a message to MC that your body is not acceptable the way it is, that you need to have a body that conforms more to what we think it should look like. The real intent of the lawsuit is just to uphold these constitutional principles, you know, integrity of a person's body, and some kind of due process for infants where their people are around them in power are considering doing surgeries like this. My name is John Cypher Wall. I do collage art. I do research. I am a nerd. And when I'm not nerding, I am speaking about how intersex folks are impacted by the medical establishment. This conversation will perhaps change the world. We just got some news about MC. It's pretty fucking big news. And I was just wondering like, how you feel about that, how you're processing it. I was totally moved. What makes this case so amazing and so dope, I feel that there's justice for this child of color who was in the foster care system, that his genitals were mutilated when he was 16 months old. He got justice. They realized that we can't take this to trial. I mean, I, I do feel like the precedent of this case kind of sits on the heels, if not the shoulders, of the organizing and the movement work that's been done by both the intersex community as well as the black community. I'm talking about black liberation that's been happening for well over 20, 30 years in its recent iteration, which is Black Lives Matter. The case is very complicated. You know, he was an intersex child of color who was adopted by white people, who had a really high power legal team behind him, you know, and the Medical University of South Carolina, as well as the state, really had to... It wasn't a case that they were going to sweep under the rug, you know? So I think they were not prepared. And I don't know if they necessarily acknowledged what they did was wrong, um, what they did was a human rights violation, but I think it is important. This case is going to set precedent for intersex organizing in the United States. It just is. Great. That brings me to my second question, Saifa, which is... What do you think is important for intersex people and activists to remember in the aftermath of this court decision? Yeah, you know, I think what we have to remember and as far as like movement building and movement organizing is that we can't get too comfortable. You know, I think what often happens is that as people reach a plateau, they're like, they get comfortable. And then they kind of move toward assimilation tactics, which are like, oh, I'm just like you. And I think the intersex um, organizing community and intersex activists really need to be like, okay, this is how are we going to implement these civil rights, you know, because we have this victory of a court case. Like, what is our next step? I think this is like a galvanizing moment where we really need to be thinking long term vision and even short term, you know, like, what does it look like? What does it look like for us to confront the medical establishment, particularly in the U.S.? Like, and how can we learn from organizing movements throughout the world as this is a global movement, you know? Beautiful. I was just making sure you were done. Okay, this is my favorite question, and this is what we're going to end on. I just want MC to know, like what they did for us in the future and like I don't want that to ever be forgotten because MC kind of just is living their life they don't even really understand what's going on with the courts right now probably totally. and how our liberation has literally been um in the courts thanks to the life of a black child and and often their mother who's who's unspoken of so I was thinking like <laughs> so so <laughs> so what could we what would you like to send if you could sit down with 85-year-old MC and kind of tell them the impact of what they've done for us and the people that are going to come after us that are intersex, what would you like to... Do you have anything that you would like to say? Man, I mean, I think that is such a beautiful question. You know, because if I were able to sit down with MC, I would just say thank you. 
I would say thank you for kind of like what you said, Pigeon, about like how indirectly your your decision as a child for your own bodily autonomy, for your uh, sovereignty, you know, um, reclaiming his own sovereignty really set a precedent for um, intersex activism, but as well as black liberation, you know, and brown liberation, you know, and so I feel like, you know, I think I would just be really curious about, like, who that person would be at this distant point in the future. You know, if I'm sitting down with 88-year-old MC, like, I think I would want to ask him how he's been impacted. You know, like, how was it to discover that your body was violated in this way? Because I think often is that as intersex activists, we're asked to talk about our pain, but in public, but we're not we're not asked to talk about what we deal with behind closed doors. Like, I think people don't necessarily want to hear that, that suffering in those quiet moments, you know? So I think I would really want to sit down and ask him, like, how did he, how did he find the resource to continue living as long as he did? I think what he did by virtue of him living has really made a significant impact on the intersex community. Yeah, and I I said something like earlier to you that he is kind of just going on with his life not really not active in this, but actually mm-hmm. he in I think first grade went to school and said I'm not a girl, I'm a boy. I, this is who I am. He reclaimed himself in first grade and stood in front of a classroom and proclaimed his new identity in a way that gave me bravery to do similar things like just use the bathroom that I need to use you know I think of MC sometimes like this first grader did it so if you have anything you want to close with I want everyone to know about the significance of this case you know when we're talking about state violence when we're talking about state violence against intersex people when we're talking about state violence against black and brown people this is the case to look at. This is the case to follow. This case is so layered and I think what the white intersex community doesn't realize is the layers of complicated history that that this case is. You know, like this child of color who is in the foster care system. You know, there are so many black and indigenous children in foster care right now. You know, and given that he, like you said, Pigeon, like he was um, a ward of the state. He was taken from his mother um, for reasons that, you know, I'm not sure of. Um, but he was a ward of the state that increased his vulnerability um, for these types of surgeries, given that he was a ward of the state, given that he was a brown child, he was a black and brown child, given that he was intersex. This is a confluence of the oppression that we're talking about. And I think what I would say to MC, I would say thank you. And I would say to like the movement, to the left folks, to black folks, to intersex folks, to brown people who are organizing in the streets right now, this is the case to look at. You know, this is when, um, this is, this just shows how the state will attack the most vulnerable among us. Um, and so again, you know, in closing, I'm just I'm just grateful and I am on fire. All right, thank you. Thank you. I you love you. I love you too, Pigeon. <laughs> thank you so much, Saifa. I always learn from you. I love learning from you and I love just everything that you said today. So thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to moving forward with you with some positivity finally in our movement. Oh my god. <laughs> this is it, Pigeon. <laughs> and I hope one day MC can see this video when they're a little bit older and they they will feel loved like they should. I hope they do. I hope they feel all of it. Even right now. Yeah. I Yeah. Same. I, Pigeon, I love you. You are brilliant. You are dynamic. And you're just doing so much for our community. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you immensely. Thank you, Saifa. I love you. I love you too. I love you. <laughs> all right. Bye, boo. Intersex stories, not surgeries. Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> Perfect. All right, boo. Thank you. Put headphones in. Mm, no, cause I don't. No. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs>